Welcome to the second part of the how to make a VR game in Unity 6.2 cars. After learning how to set up Unity for VR and make our own VR player, in this video we are going to learn about VR input that we will use to animate a 3D hand model that we will be able to use for hand presence on our player. How cool is that? If you enjoy this series, make sure to subscribe and leave a like down below to not miss the next one. Remember that you can get access to not only the source code of this series, but two exclusive videos on my Patreon, where we will build a VR game from scratch using what we learned so far. So if you'd like to support the channel, join us, the link is in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we are left where we were at the end of last episode, and if we want to understand how input works for VR controllers with the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, we need to learn about the XR Interaction Debugger. So to do this, let's go above to Windows, Analysis, and here click on XR Interaction Debugger. So the XR Interaction Debugger is a really awesome tool that will let us understand the different interactors and interactable of our game that we will be covering in a future episode. But more than that, it also displays the different input that we are using. To do this, let's uncheck interactors, uncheck interactables, and enable input devices. Once that's done, we can simply click on play. Okay, so already you can see what's going on. We have three input devices, the head tracking, the MetaQuest Touch Plus controllers for the left hand, and the MetaQuest Touch Plus for the right hand. Basically, it was able to recognize the device that I'm using. And for the head tracking, you can see that we have the user presence. You can know if we are tracking right now, we can have some input for the eyes position. But if we go under maybe the left controllers, we can have a look at the different input available for us. For example, if I press on the trigger button here, you can see that the corresponding value is displayed over there from zero when we are not pressing it to one when it is fully pressed. Down below, we also have a trigger button, which this time doesn't give a value, but just tells you if it's pressed or not, true when it's pressed, false when it's not. And basically, you have that for all of the different buttons. For example, with the grip button over there, for the menu button, or even here at the top for the joystick with two values, which are the horizontal input and also the vertical input. So I think that this is a very, very good, good tool for you to get started on understanding the different inputs and their name within the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit. But once that's done, where can we actually find these actions and how can we actually use them? This is what we will learn. Let's simply leave the play mode and close the XR Interaction Debugger. To have a look at where these input actions are, we simply need to go to Assets, Samples, XR Interaction Toolkit, the version that we have, Starter Asset, and here down below, you should see the XRI default input action. If we double click on them, this will allow you to have a look at everything that it contains. We have the action maps on the left side, which correspond to a certain list of action. For example, if we select the XRI left interaction, we can then see that we have a bunch of action that are available. We have an action to select. And if we click on the drop down button here, we can see the different bindings for each one of these action. For example, we can see that for the select action on the left controllers, it is binding to all of these devices. Now, I think that this is a very important thing to show you, but if you are a beginner, I strongly encourage you to not mess too much with all of these settings, not try to override or change any, because I think that the default inputs are very good. But what's important to note is that we have multiple type of value. For example, for the select action here, it is using a button action type. For the select value this time, it is using a value, so not a button. And if we go to the left locomotion, we can see that for move, this action this time is using a value, but of type vector2. And this is because it is mapped to the left joystick. Okay, so now that we understand the different action and where we can find them, let's learn how we can actually use them. To do this, let's close this window. And we are going to build a very simple script that will be able to display directly these values for us. So let's right click in the R key, go to create empty, call this one input test, and then let's click on add component to add a custom component to this game object. I'm going to name it as well input test. Then we can click here on new script and then on create and add. Then we can save it wherever we want, for example here. And finally, we can double click on the script name to open it in Visual Studio. 
Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio on our input test script. So if it's the first time that you are creating a new script, don't worry, it is not too complicated. Just follow along and you will see, even if I cannot explain how everything works, the logic will be easy to understand. Okay, so the first thing that we need is add the input system namespace. At the top, I can write using unity engine.input system. By doing this, we are allowing our script to access the new input system from Unity. And in our case, we need to create a reference to one action by doing public input action property. And here we can name it anything we want. For example, test action value. And finally, end the line by a semicomma. There you go. Now, if we save with Control S and that we go back to Unity, you can see that the script compiler and there you go, you can see that now we have a reference appearing on Unity for our test action value that we can directly reference right now. For this, let's simply click here and use reference. And now we can assign any input action value that we want. We can click here and select one of these. Or another technique is simply maybe to go under our samples, XR Interaction Toolkit, and find our XRI default input action list. If we click on these little icons, we can scroll through all of our action. In my case, I'm going to select back the input test game object and drag on the test action value, the XRI left interaction select value. Beautiful, now our action is reference. It means that we will be able to listen to it on our script. So let's go back to our script. And the big question is, how can we actually listen to that value? And for this, we will need to go here on the update function. The update function is something that will be called every frame of our game. And we can actually get the action simply by writing float value equals test action value dot action dot read value. And here we need to say the type of input that we are reading in the case of the input value we want it to be of type float. And there you go. Now that we have that value, we can do anything with it. We can use it to trigger any behavior, turn object red, move the player, anything. But in our case, we are simply going to write it on the console with debug.log. And here we can write value plus value. This will simply here write on the console this text, which will be able to display here the value of the input directly. Okay, now let's save go back to Unity. And now I think that we are ready. Let's click on play to find out if this works. Okay, so here we go. Nothing seems to happen. So what's going on? And this is because we don't have the console windows showing. So we can simply open it by going to Windows, General, and here click on Console. And as you can see, we have some result over here. We have some value being displayed on our console window. Now, if you don't see any, Make sure that this is enabled, otherwise it will simply ignore the debug. But now, the real test will be to find out if we are pressing on the grip button on the left controller, if this value will update, and let's find out if I press on it. There you go, as you can see, a value from 0 to 1 is displayed, which means that we were able to get the input in a custom script, and now that we are able to use that input for any behavior that we want. Okay, but what if we don't have a value action, but maybe a button action? How can we update our script? And this is actually very simple. Go back to the script. I will copy and paste this line, but instead rename this one test action button. Okay, so now let me select these two lines and let's simply pay them. Now in the case of a button, we don't get a value, but we get a yes or no output, which is what we call a boolean. So let's rename this one bool for boolean. And I'm going to name this button. There you go. Now I'm going to select here our test action button. And here, very important, instead of read value float, for button, you can directly get the value with is pressed. There you go. And now in the debug log that we have here, we can simply write button with our button value that we have. There you go. Let's save our script. Go back to Unity. For the test action button, we can set it to use reference, go back to our XRI default input action over there. And now if I select back input test, I can simply set it to be XRI left interaction select over there. And here we are, we now have two different type of action, one which is a value and the other which is a button. So let's save and click on play to find out if this works. And there you go, as you can see, if I press on the grip button, 
it updates correctly the value from 0 or 1, but the button value gives us only true or false correctly depending on if it's pressed or not. And there you go, that sums up how you can actually use XR inputs. But let's put what we learn into test, because I want to use these input value to actually animate hands and create hand presents for our player. Of course, if we need to animate a hands, we need an animated hands 3D model. Lucky for you, you will find in the description a link to a drive that will contain exactly that. So make sure to go in the description of this video. Once you open the drive link, you can simply download it right there. Once it is downloaded, you can drag it in Unity here on the asset folder. And as you can see, it will open the Unity package and show you what's inside. You can then click on import. There you go. As you can see, the package is in our project now. If we go in animated hands, prefab, we can have a look at the two hands that this package contains, which I think looks very, very good. Now we are going to drag them under the left and right end of our player. So we need to do the same as for what we did in the previous episode on the XR controller, which is copy here this component, drag the left end under the left end, and paste the value of the component back. Now let's do that for the right end. So right click, copy, component, drag the right end model under the right hand, right click, paste, component value. Now there you go, as you can see, we have a left end model under our left end, and we have a right end model under our right end. Now of course, if you prefer to have controllers, you can disable them, but in my case, I actually prefer hands over controllers, so I'm going to select the previous controller that we added, so the XR controller left, as well as the XR controller right, and disable them by clicking here. There you go, now only the two hands are showing, and now let me show you something very very cool. Because if we double click on the left hand animator, there you go, this will open the animator panel that is able to animate the end. We can select the blend tree and double click on it. And here, if we click here on blend tree, this will show you a bit what's going on. Now, you don't need to know anything about animation to actually use it, but I think it's really cool for you to actually watch what it does. Because here we have, as you can see, two values, the grip and the trigger value. And if we increase the grip value, as you can see on the right side, it will update the 3D mesh accordingly. Same goes on for the trigger. As you can see, it will pinch. So to sum up here, our goal will be to listen to the input of our player and change these two values accordingly so that the end is able to animate. Okay, let's find out how we can do this. We can select back the scene window. Let's select the left end model, then press on the control key and select the right end model, click on add component and add a new component name animate and on input. There we go, we can click on new script and then on create and add. Then on save, after compiling we can open the script by double clicking on the animate and on input. And here the script will exactly use what we just learned with the input test script that we created earlier. So remember we need to write using unity engine dot input system. Then once that's done, we can create some input action. In my case, I will need two input action. Uh, input action property for the trigger value and an input action property for the grip value. There we go. Finally, I will also add another reference, but this time for the animator, which is responsible to animate the hand. We can call it hand animator. Beautiful. And now on the update function, we are going to get the value of the trigger input action by simply float trigger equals trigger value dot action dot read value float. Now let's do exactly the same, but this time for the grip with grip value dot action dot read value float. And once that's done, what we simply need to do is update the value of the animator. Now, if we go back to Unity, and click on the animator, we can see that on the blend tree, these two values are called grip and trigger. So this is the name of thing that we need to update. So if we go back to our script, let's do an animator dot set float, give the name trigger. And then as a second parameters, we can give the trigger value. Beautiful. Now let's do the same for this time, the grip with grip, grip. And beautiful, as simple as this, we are able to get the two input value of the trigger and the grip button, and we are able to update the end animation accordingly. Now we can simply save our script, go back to Unity, 
And now what's left is to simply reference the animate hand-on input component. So for this, let's click on the left hand model. For the trigger value, let's set use reference and search for XRI left interaction activate value. For the grip value, let's do use reference and this time XRI left interaction select value. Beautiful. For the end animator, we simply need to drag the animator of this ends over there. And now our left end model is set up correctly. Let's do the same for the right end. Use reference, right XRI, right interaction, activate value. Use reference, XRI, right interaction, select value. And finally, drag the animator. And just like that, as you can see, our left and right end model are correctly set up with the animate hand on input that contains the correct action. Now let's select back the scene window and let's click on play to find out if this works. And there you go, guys, it is working. How awesome is that? I can see both my hands moving when I press a button on the controller. Again, thank you for following till the end and make sure to subscribe to not mix the next episode about how to move in VR with continuous movement and teleportation. And if you'd like to get access to the source code and watch the two exclusive tutorials of this series where we will build a VR project from scratch, join us on Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.